Hello and welcome to Business Weekly on City TV. My name is Pius Amihe Ediku and coming up in this edition, Parliament approved 10.99 billion cities as expenditure for January to March for next fiscal year and illegal miners occupying Anglogo Dashanti Obwasi concession defy order to leave the site. Details of these and any, many other stories coming up in this edition. In our first story, Parliament on Thursday approved 10.99 billion cities as expenditure for government between January and March 2017. Of the amount, compensation of employees is expected to reach 3.8 billion cities, while interest payment is also expected to amount to about 1.8 billion cities. Meanwhile, government says it anticipates total revenue to hit 8.9 billion cities for the three-month period. Finance Minister Ted Tekwe has, however, defended the decision to allocate 2.5% of the total amount to goods and services. This decision has not gone down well with the minority in Parliament, but according to the Finance Minister, the decision is also influenced by government plan not to borrow for recurrent expenditure. So on this, economist Dr. Lord Mensah has criticized government for the almost 2 billion cities budget deficit. According to him, the development is worrying as government borrowing is not committed to reflect in growth of the economy. Away from that, the Minerals Commission has given the strongest indication yet for illegal miners still occupying Angogo Dashantes Obwasi concession to leave the size or suffer ejection. The CEO of the Commission, Dr. Tony Orban, explains to City Business News those who continue to defy the order will be treading risky parts if they do not adhere to the directive to leave. Now, the illegal miners, however, on Wednesday staged a demonstration that led to the vandalizing of properties belonging to the New Patriotic Party, the National Democratic Congress, and the Progressive People's Party. According to them, they will not leave the site to the new place allocated to them by the Minerals Commission. In other business stories, some customers of DKM Microfinance in Bogatanga in the Upper East region are livid over what they say is a paltry sum of money being given to them by the official liquidator. Payments for customers who were affected in the DKM Microfinance scam started on Monday, October 17. While some of the customers are happy with the amount that they are received, some say the 10 cities that they are being given is meager compared to the thousand cities and over they invested in the company. However, responding to the concerns, the principal company inspector for the official liquidator, Jones Nathaniel Ansa, explained that the official liquidator's office will consider these concerns and address them appropriately. Let's now shift focus to the banking industry where some stock market analysts are predicting of more banks listing on the domestic base to meet the new capital requirement to be pegged by the Bank of Ghana. Now, this decision also follows that is the move by Nigerian-owned bank Access to list on the domestic bills. Access Bank last Wednesday it launched its initial public offer IPO to raise a minimum of 104 million cities to support its growth and expansion strategies. Meanwhile, the analysts have ruled out any significant distortion to shares of other banks listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. In our final story, the Consumer Protection Agency, CPE, says it will not hesitate to boycott the product of any company that seeks to prevent government from granting permits for the importation of cement into the country. Now, according to the agency, the decision to allow the importation of cement will increase supply and also culminate in the reduction of the cost of rent for both commercial and residential properties. And that is it for this week's edition of Business Weekly on City TV. My name is Pius Amihe Ediku. Join us next week for another exciting edition.